Today in the Northwest, the force of falling water flowing through our rivers and streams creates enough hydroelectricity to light up to 10 million homes and businesses. Hi, my name is Steve Mum, and I'll be your guide as we explore the connection between water and electricity. Our journey will take us from clouds to rivers, through a dam, and into our communities. Together we'll discover just what it takes to keep the lights on in the Northwest. We've got a lot of water to cover, so let's get going. Our first stop, looking for water. The hydrologic or water cycle brings us rain and snow throughout the seasons each year. Warm by the sun, evaporation carries water from the ocean into the air where it forms into clouds. As the clouds pass over the land, they pick up more moisture from plants and trees. The water then falls as rain or snow and is collected through thousands of miles of rivers, lakes and streams on its journey back to the ocean. Melting snow in the spring also brings water to the rivers. This water cycle can be thought of like our daily weather report. Like if I say, look for a high of 56 degrees, cloudy skies, and about a half inch of rain. But let's back up a bit and imagine that just for a moment that the rainfall or snowfall is being measured not just in inches, but also in how we might use the water. So then I'd say, today you can expect a high of 56 degrees, cloudy skies, and one half inch of rain, which will contribute to fish migration, electrical generation, irrigation and recreation. Sound a bit strange? Let's take a closer look. Nowhere is the quality of life more connected with water and rivers than in the Pacific Northwest. A 300,000 square mile watershed of mountains, valleys, lakes, rivers and streams. Spanning two nations and seven states, this unique watershed provides a clean and renewable water supply for nearly nine and a half million people. Energy, recreation, irrigation, transportation, and habitats for thousands of different plants, fish, and wildlife stem from this water supply. All of this forms a complex ecosystem that depends on the water and the rivers for survival. In the Northwest, dams produce up to 80% of our electricity from runoff created by the rain and snow that falls every year. That's enough water to fill the entire Northwest one foot deep. Because this happens every year, hydropower is a renewable resource. So, the hydrologic cycle replenishes the water supply every year. The geography of the land catches the water in lakes, rivers, and streams. With these resources, we can create a lot of renewable energy. Look at this. From the beginning of civilization, the force of falling water through water wheels has been irrigating crops and grinding grain. And those are just a few of its uses. Today, we use the force of falling water to provide us with one of the most efficient means of producing electricity. Water funneled through a dam turns a large water wheel called a turbine. The turbine spins a shaft that rotates magnets in a generator to produce electricity. But nature doesn't always provide enough water, does it? Predicting how much rain will fall is extremely difficult, but that's nothing new. That's why many hydroelectric projects have reservoirs. Reservoirs store some of the water for future use when people most need electricity, like during the winter for heating and lighting. Other dams store water for flood control or irrigation. This is an excellent way to turn an unpredictable resource like the weather into a reliable source of water and energy. Over the centuries, many cultures have used the rivers as a source of water, food, and energy. Native peoples fished and hunted throughout the greater Northwest, weaving a culture around the river and the changing seasons. Rivers were focal points for commerce, trade, and transportation. Over time, many new and diverse communities came to the Northwest to create a way of life near the river. Miners, loggers, farmers, manufacturers, and whole communities gathered near the banks of rivers. Dams were built to meet the needs for energy, river navigation, and flood control. River flows were stabilized, giving communities and wildlife a new and different relationship to the river. Reservoirs helped irrigation transform a desert into a bountiful breadbasket for the nation. Hydropower, a renewable and 
inexpensive form of energy drew new industries like aluminum processing and aerospace to the Northwest like a magnet. But progress has many different faces. This influx of new cultures changed an ancient way of life for native peoples in the Northwest. It has also had a significant effect on some of our natural resources. As communities develop, the Northwest Natural Resource Base has shown signs of strain. Timber, mining, shipping, fishing, hydropower generation, recreation, livestock grazing, and water supply demands have all impacted the river and surrounding ecosystems in different ways. Awareness of the resulting impact has grown. But sorting out the causes and solutions is often complex, confusing, and controversial. The plight of the salmon is a good example. Salmon spend a portion of their lives in the river system, first as small fry heading out to the ocean, and then as adults returning to their spawning grounds. Over the past hundred years, their natural environment has changed dramatically. Many of those changes, like fewer places to spawn, pollution, fishing, and dams, are caused by human activities. Combined with natural threats like drought, predators, and climate changes, salmon are struggling. No one is sure of the best way to help the salmon. But one thing is certain, salmon are a valued and precious Northwest resource. Because we value all of the Northwest natural resources, a different kind of progress is now being made. Actions are being taken to clean up the rivers, rehabilitate watersheds, improve fish passages, and protect wildlife. We're now balancing this improved quality of life with a strong desire to protect our natural resources. For more information on how you can get involved, please call.